So the next theorem that we want to look at is the direct comparison test. Okay? Um, so we've stated it here as a theorem. And the, this is the sense in which is direct comparison right here. Okay? So this is direct comparison. So if you're able to set up a direct comparison, this is typically the simplest argument that you can give for convergence of a series. Right? If we have one series which we know converges, and it's easy to show that the terms in some other series are always less than or equal to the corresponding terms in the convergence series, then this one must automatically converge as well. Um, conversely, if, uh, if this series diverges, right, and the other series has terms which are larger, um, then it has to diverge as well. Uh, one thing that is important here is that they do have to be positive sequences, okay? Um, the fact that they're positive, right, means that, well, if we, if we let, um, let's say, S n to be the sum n going from 1 to big N of a n, and let's call the other one, I don't know, maybe T, just because it's the next letter in the alphabet. I call Tn sum n going from 1 to n of Bn. Um, so if we define these, if we have that and that, then these sequences, Sn and Tn, um, well, they have to be monotone increasing, right? Because we started with positive sequences. So every time we add a new term, the sum gets bigger. Okay? So they're monotone increasing. This is a useful observation to make. Um, one thing that tells us is that if we do have a divergence series, if this sum diverges, okay, well, it has to diverge to infinity, right? It has to diverge for infinity. Um, the other thing we notice is that, uh, well, Sn has to be always less than or equal to Tn. Uh, maybe I should have used a different letter here. Um, let's call that n naught or something, okay? For n bigger than or equal to this n naught, right? Um, so we always allow that maybe, maybe your comparison doesn't quite work at the beginning, but it works eventually, right? When we're, cons when we're talking about conversions of series, we always care about what happens eventually. First few terms aren't that important, right? First hundred terms, thousand terms, million terms aren't necessarily important. It's only what happens eventually that matters, okay? So maybe this is a big number. It doesn't matter, as long as we have this eventually, okay? So what that tells me is that, well, if the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is infinity, then the limit as n goes to infinity of Tn must also be infinity, right? Um, if we have this inequality for all n, right, um, this quantity is always bigger than that quantity. If this is becoming infinite, this one must also become infinite. Um, you can prove that straight from the definition of the limit if you want. Okay. Um, on the other hand, and so by the way, this uh, this proves the second part of the theorem, right? Um, if Sn goes to infinity, right, that's saying that this series diverges, which tells us that this one diverges. Um, on the other hand, um, if the limit as n goes to infinity of, let's say, Tn is some value, uh, let's, I don't know, call it uh, B. Why not? Um, 
Well, what can we say then? Well, we know that Sn has to be less than or equal to Tn. Um, but Tn has to be less than or equal to B, right? Because if, if Tn is an increasing sequence, right, it's an increasing sequence, um, it has to be less than or equal to its limit, okay? Because it gets bigger. As n increases, so does, so does Tn, okay? Um, well, that means that this sequence is bounded and it's increasing. Um, so what do we know about bounded increasing sequences? We have the monotone convergence theorem. It says if you have a bounded increasing sequence, it has to converge, okay? So that's exactly the scenario of the first, right? So that means that, that this sequence converges, which is the same thing as saying that the series converges, and uh, that proves the first part. Okay. In case you're wondering why it's true, there's the argument. Um, so direct comparison is pretty straightforward. It makes intuitive sense, right, that if if these numbers are always bigger than those numbers, if this converges, well, this should converge to something smaller. Makes sense, right? Um, similarly, if this diverges, well, this should be bigger than that, so it should diverge as well. Makes sense. Um, next, we'll look at some examples so we can see how we actually apply this in, in practice, right? And the challenge with using direct comparison is here. It's getting that inequality. Right? It's easier said than done. Sometimes it's straightforward and you can see the inequality and you set it up straight away and everyone's happy. Sometimes it's tough. So we'll look at some easy examples, we'll look at some tough examples. Um, and then just like for improper integrals, when direct comparison fails, you ask whether or not there's some sort of limit comparison that you can use, and fortunately the answer will be yes.